welcome to the official launch of Finding Joy Beyond Childlessness, otherwise affectionately known as Joy. <laughs> My name's Beverly Glick, and I've known Leslie for a couple of years. I'm going to introduce Leslie properly in a moment. But I'm passionate about storytelling, and I call myself a story archaeologist. I help people dig into their life stories to, to find the gold within. And I also co-founded a storytelling event called The Story Party, which Leslie is a, a, a very key member of the team there. And it's been going for nearly five years now, and couldn't have done it without Leslie. So that's why I'm here. And before we go any further, what I'd like to invite you to do is to put your phones on silent. Could you all do that now? <laughs> that would be great. I feel how that's shifted the energy in the room. It's really brought us back to our centres, which is beautiful. So before we move to <coughs> the Q&A session that uh, Leslie and Kate are going to do in a moment, I just wanted to say a few words about Leslie. So I first met Leslie in 2015 when she attended a workshop that I was co-hosting called Own Your Story, Own the Room. And at the end of the day, Leslie came over to me like a woman on a mission. <laughs> and she said, with great focus and intensity, I need you. I did. Not, I need to work with you, but <laughs> I need you. And that took us on a journey together over many months into Leslie's story. And part of that journey took us to the Black Mountains of Wales, mm -hmm. where I got to understand much more about what actually what Leslie writes so movingly about in the book, which is the way in which she was stuffing grief into a box. And it had started spilling out to such an extent mm -hmm. that there was barely a moment during our time together there that she wasn't in tears. So that makes it even more remarkable that really not, not that many months later, here she is, having found her joy. And Leslie, it might have been a long and winding road, <laughs> but this particular hero, heroine's journey is complete. And you have brought home the treasure in the shape of this book. Thank you. So, May your joy be unconfined. Thank you. Yes. Round of applause for Leslie. <laughs> so now I'd like to take us into the Q&A session. So Leslie is now going to have a conversation <laughs> with her friend Kate Bryan, who's a journalist who works in many areas of women's health but actually first met Leslie when they were both, and I don't want to get this wrong, trustees of the Fertility Network UK. So <laughs> away you go, ladies. <laughs> Leslie, that was a long time ago, and it I was. couldn't ever see what you call the old Leslie in your book, Thank you. ever writing a book like this and telling your story in public. I mean, what led you to want to do that? Well, I've been collecting stories on my website for quite a while and um, I always thought there was a book there but I never was never exactly sure and then um, on a yoga mat of course mm -hmm. I had this um, I had a sort of feeling that here I was at my party um, holding the book in my hand um, and that was kind of the dream it was no longer a dream it was something that I had to do and I guess that's that if you can if you can dream it, you can do it. That's that feeling I had, that now it felt very real in me, so I, so I started writing. Um, and then there was another strand that I wanted to hold it. I really felt I wanted to hold it. And my, I'm going to look over there, Melanie over there, she said, that's not why you're writing it. And I said, it is, it is. But she said, no, it isn't. And it, it wasn't, it was the inside of me was calling me to get to dig, dig into deeper into the subjects and to, to fully grieve and come out the other side. And I think that, so it's, it's the two reasons. It's one, it's showing that you can have that fulfilling life and yeah, that, that, and the 
do, doing the grief the work, book. doing my grief work, yes. I yeah. think it's really interesting in the book because writing is obviously a key sort of therapeutic thing for you and it's also something that you advise other people it to is. do in the book. And yeah. why do you think it is so important? What is it about it that helps? Well, I think, I mean, there is some research that says that if, you, if you've had a traumatic event, if you write for 20 minutes a day, um, I think three or four days, then it, it reduces the, the stress and the trauma and all of that. But it's more than that, I think. It's, I, I've been doing... Um, Julia Cameron's morning pages for quite a while which is you write three pages of longhand every morning and it's just getting stuff out of your head I think it's all that things that you can't talk to your friends and family about but you can write on the page I think that's very important that also the um, you know you can rant you can get everything out of your head um, and it after I think it's a couple of pages uh, people say love answers if you like that you you know you start to get um, the, the kind of voice coming back um, a kind of voice answering so it's very it's very therapeutic it's like, like having a therapist on hand actually to be fair talking uh, about therapists one of the other things that I think is a really key point in your book is about people not being afraid to ask for yes. help and that not being a sign of weakness yes and I think that's another thing maybe old Leslie wouldn't have wanted to ask no. anyone for help no well I mean I, I've I've, I mean, I've had a business coach for quite a while, and um, I've. But going to a therapist was a big thing, and I went kicking and screaming. To be fair, my my friend Karen, who's in Vegas, I, email, she's a therapist, um, and I emailed her and said, I need, you know, I need this, and I wanted her to wave a magic wand, and she didn't, and and I was, I was that, am I that? And I, I won't use the swear word that I want to. Am I that messed up that I need to see a therapist? But actually, it was the best decision I've. I've made I think and my healing really began in that room Jill's room um, where I it's that safe space where I started to I did fall apart and then started to rebuild myself so yeah I think it's interesting that idea because it's something that comes across quite strongly in your kind of advice to other people that yeah. actually you know it's not being messed up it's actually being normal I mean I wonder if you want to talk a bit more about that you mean the, the, the grieving yeah, yeah. yeah well I mean yes it, it's <coughs> grief is that thing that we, we none of us want to feel but we all it's there and I I hid all mine I hid it I put it in a box I remember after mum's funeral um, we, I was walking down the road and I was going to start feeling like I was going to cry and I took what was in my head and I put it in a box and there it went and the box started getting fuller and fuller and as Bev said it, it was overflowing um, but in the safe space of a therapy room and in, on the yoga mat that's where I've learnt to grieve because you, you can't outrun it it will catch you and I can't remember what question you asked well, me well, I, I, think, I think about what you're saying about grief because I don't think people associate grief as an emotion with childlessness they don't no, think uh, no. of that at all and I mean how did you come to recognize it for what it was um well I, I at the time I didn't um at the time when we finished our IVF treatment all those years ago I just thought I was sad and it and, and it was one of those because I hadn't learned to feel and it, I just bottled it all up and it was only after my dad died that everything spilled out um, but yes I mean there's quite a few people here who are in the same boat but it's it, it's it's a grief that a lot of life never turns out for hardly any of us like we think does it mm. let's be fair and lots of things particularly with when you thought you were always thought you would be a mother when that's that doesn't happen that's that is a grief process that is a absolutely and, and um, yeah and it's something that you've got to go through you can't outrun it. You've got it catch you in the end. But I don't think people understand quite how much. I mean, I think that's one of the things mm. that comes across very clearly. But quite what a huge impact it has yes. on you. There's this kind of idea: oh, it happens, or it doesn't happen. You can just get on with things. Yeah. And I think that was very much kind of old Leslie's attitude yeah. towards it, wasn't it? It was. Yeah. I mean, I think that, and and I think for, for many of us, and I'm, there's probably there's quite a few of us here, we hid all of that because we, you don't want to talk about it, uh, it uh, until you've healed so a little bit inside you can't verbalize it outside so it's easier to put up the armor and not talk about it and to just hide everything and, and then you eventually you become someone that you're not that's and that, you know that eventually it builds up and builds up and you become that different person well, what I think is really interesting is that you actually recognise that in yourself mm. because, you know, I, I know, having known you 10, 15 years ago, that you actually looked completely physically different. I mean, you were the same person, not but you didn't, you didn't look like a happy person. No. You wouldn't have been sitting there smiling at me now with your hair cut short and with your nails painted no. and with your leopard print boots on, would you? No. I mean, tell us a bit about that well, transformation. 
Oh, that's the grief process. That's going into that learning to feel. Um, and the, the, what I've done on the yoga mat connected to my body, absolutely, that's the two things, I think, that have um, done that, that work. Um, and just, I don't know, just come out the other side mm. and comfortable in my own skin. That's the thing. It's, it, yeah, it's just going through the grief. Basically. Talking about feeling comfortable in your own skin, I think one of the other things that you bring out quite clearly in the book is about how fertility problems make you stop believing in your body yeah. and have yeah. a really difficult relationship with your body. Yes. And you've got quite a lot of advice in the book about that and I wondered if that was something you could expand on yeah. a bit. Well, well I think there is, um, there's a strong mind-body link but also there's um, your body, what I understand, body stores stress, I know that, stress and trauma and infertility, grief is is trauma. I mean, there's trauma, and there's also you know trauma at different levels, and it does get stored in your body. And I, my, I, when um, I think Jill first asked me what did I think about my body, it was like, well, it's that thing below my head, and I never really particularly thought about it. So that connecting with it and the work that I've done with the yoga and learning how to feel has um, brought me back back into my body actually and, and there's some it, I mean there's a couple of really interesting other stories in, in, in the book I think it's um, Rosalind who, who felt that this bit of her body was over here and didn't completely disconnected to her because um, it, it, it had let her down so badly um, so she did some work I think that I think body work with grief is it, really helpful because it brings you back to yourself it's really interesting that you say about the stories because I think reading the stories one after the other you really notice that that is a common theme mm. people talking about their bodies and about yeah. not trusting them anymore yeah. and I think that was one of the interesting things about reading your book is the collection of stories that you've mm. got together and how you start to see common threads yes. running through them how did you find all the people to interview um, well some of them are out there as I think Melanie described it as doing their childless thing like Jessica <laughs> over there you know it's sort of all, already out there and some some of my friends um, not everybody's written under their own name, but most of them have. Um, so just trawling the internet, actually, to be fair. Um, and I think it is, it is important to show that you can have that fulfilling life. You know, you see, hear so many people say, I'm childless and I'm never going to be happy. I'll always feel like that. And that's, no, that doesn't have to be like that. It doesn't have to be like that. I quite like the way you um, put them into the book as well because you have them all telling their stories up yeah. to a certain point and then coming back to them. How did you get the idea to do that rather than putting... Because I think that really works. Well, I think um, I, I started by looking at all the stories and putting them into the different categories with the, um, for the different chapters. And then I thought, well, it, it was quite nice, although people will probably need a few tissues to read, uh, to read them all at the beginning. And then, then it, it makes sense to come back to them at the end, doesn't it? I don't know, lots of post-it notes, I think, was how we got to that. <laughs> and you're actually taking your reader on a journey yeah. through the healing process as well. So can yes. you just talk about the different stages of the book? Well, it's like, it's a, I, I use the butterfly metaphor, and it's like the, uh, like the hero's journey as well, really. It's that, um, so that the act one is is giving you some tools to take to get you started basically and talking about story and um, yeah working out the baseline where you are when you start going and then the middle bit it's like going into the chrysalis which is that falling apart and rebuilding yourself so there's topics like grieving letting go connecting to your body writing um, finding joy um, and then the, fi the final bit is like who you are now taking what, what colour and shape your wings are, sort of build, rebuilding yourself um, to get to, ready to go out into the world. Talking about finding joy, joy is not usually a word that no. people put next to childlessness. No, it's not, it? <laughs> I wonder if you could ex explain a bit about how you get to the joy. Well, uh, I think that's... Um, sorry, I don't I'm going to have noise. I think joy is different from happiness. That's one thing to think about. Happiness is something that happens with... I think happenstance is how, how uh, the guy describes it. But... Um, Joy is something fundamental, it's a way of being, so there's, um, and it, often I think we, we think that joy comes in big moments, and yes there's a lot of it tonight, but often it's those small moments in life where we find joy, um, you know, being, being kind to somebody else, and things that don't cost any money actually, you know, often just being a smile, give a smile or be kind to someone. Um, and creativity has been great for me as well actually, I mean things that I, um, I know I said, I said to somebody, I'm not very creative, but then they said, oh, well, you've got a website and all this sort of stuff. But then I've been looking at things that I used to enjoy doing, um, like embroidery I, I used to do with my mum. And um, 
I've bought a kit. I don't know if I'm any good at it yet, but it's fun. And I'll, you know, so it's like trying different things. Um, and that attitude of, of joy, you know, it's, it's an attitude. I'm going to look for it. I'm going to take moments out to find, to find joy. And you do talk a lot about the positives that people, and, and other people in yeah. their stories talk about them yes. as well. And, and what they came to see is some of those positive <laughs> things like time and yeah. space and choice. And you've obviously really used that yourself, haven't you? Um, we do our best, don't we? Yeah. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think that's the... Um, it, I, I always take the view that we've got freedom and flexibility, and that can be a, a blessing and a, and a curse, to be fair, because sometimes think, well, okay, what am I going to do? Because, but you don't have to live a great life, you know, an extraordinary life, just enjoying your life, making the most of every day, of every moment. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, we're fortunate that we can travel, and um, I, I think for me also that it's focusing on myself. And I, I, I'm just looking around the room, quite a few of my friends have done things that they wouldn't have done that, that if they'd had children, like going to work abroad for a couple of years or, you know, retiring early, those sort of things. It's, it's making the most of every day, actually, looking, you know, doing what you really want to do, what you love. And I think those messages are actually true for everyone. Absolutely. So, Leslie, I'm waiting actually for book number two. You told me not to ask you what you're going to do. I'm waiting for her book number two, which is not about Tarzan's, but it's about positive life for everyone. Because you've got, <laughs> there is so much in that book for everyone to learn from, I think, about leading a positive life and about being more thank positive you. and being more like Leslie. So, thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. Does anyone else have any questions? Oh, we've got a question master here. Question Hello. Master. Thanks very much, Kate. Oh. And I believe, Kate, oh. you were the first person to say to Leslie that she looks 10 years younger. She does, though, doesn't she? <laughs> so there you go, everybody. <laughs> Write a book. <laughs> and you'll make her 10 years younger. <laughs> so I'm going to throw it open now oh. to questions. Okay, I'm oh. please, please, please. So Thanks for that, Lisa. <laughs> <laughs> um, how do I feel? It, well, it's in, it's interesting because it's dif it's difficult to know actually. I mean, um, it's in there, isn't it? I don't, I don't know. I feel okay actually. I feel okay about it. I mean, it's a process that I've been through um, and been quite open about it. Um, but then. I think, as Bev would say, you know, you, you tell a story from your scar, not from your wounds, don't yeah. you? So, I I feel okay being open about this. If I if I didn't, I wouldn't have written it. It wouldn't be in there. So. I mean, no one's judging me. No, 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 I know that. So I think we've got a question from mm -hmm. Karen. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I've heard you talk many times about, um, you know, not getting sucked down the rabbit hole of negativity yeah and one of the things that interests me is when you talk about your antidote to that if you yeah. like is gratitude and something which we alluded to at the beginning of, of this yeah. but i'd like you to say a little bit more about your practice of gratitude okay. and what that actually means in reality please well, I think that the, 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 just a bit of theory that you like that the mind has got a negativity bias so the more what we focus on the more that we focus on negative, the more negative we become. So gratitude is a way of just turning that that a little bit. Um, uh, and I know we went through that. I can't remember the name of it now. That a book, didn't we? Um, and we did something every day, and that that was really helpful. Um, I think that, and also saying I'm grateful for something because is is also quite a, a, a way. I, my my practice is. Um, I have a stone by the side of my bed and I, each night before I, before I go to sleep it goes in my hand and I think of the main thing that I was grateful for today. Um, and that's, that's a really good way I think for me to set down the end of the day. I mean there's l lots of different ways of, of doing that but I think the th thing is to just try, try one and keep going with it. But it, it, it certainly helps to turn, turn your mind away from the negative towards the positive. So, Linda, I believe Linda's got a question. Not that they're staged. Hi, Leslie. I think it's just amazing what you've done with this book. It's such Linda. a wonderful resource for all the people who've been on the same journey, you know, and who are further behind than you are. So I was just wondering, um, if somebody has always seen being a mother as their life purpose, the reason they're here, 
what advice would you give them to help them move beyond that? Well, I, I, to me, I think that uh, purpose is overrated, knowing your life purpose. I mean, some people do know that their life purpose, but not everybody does. And I think, um, I, I take um, Liz Elizabeth Gilbert's view is that she talks about curiosity. And rather than focusing on purpose, just think, what are you interested in? What are you curious about? Um, and she talks about turn your head just a few, little bit, follow those if you like breadcrumb trail, I think she describes it, or follow so things that you're interested in, which is what has helped really helped me with. I was talking about the sewing before, or with yoga, or um, um, so I think that that's more inter follow a follow things that you're interested in, and and they might lead you to the purpose, but they might not. But at the end of the day, you've had an interesting life. You know? Thank you. I have another question. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah, it, it, it's occurred to me, and I, and I know you want to save at this moment, but do you think there's room for a sequel? <laughs> where I'm not the fourth where person the partners, to say that this week. I where don't the know. partners write their stories? Partners? Mm -hmm. oh, I don't know. I'm looking around the room here for a few some volunteers. Brave, some brave <laughs> volunteers. <laughs> I don't know, actually. I mean, me, um, there's not much written about men's no. and childlessness. Yeah. But actually. I'm sure, you know, there's the, only, the guys um, go through just as much yeah. trauma in their own way, don't they? So. I'm not looking at anyone in particular, but there you go. <laughs> the challenge has been set. I don't know. It's, uh, actually, several people have said to me, as, as, as uh, Kate said, that you could, I mean, this book, I c you could do it for different groups of people, yes. actually. Um, and you're about the fourth person this week to say, what, what book are you writing next? But I don't know. <laughs> I need to lie down first. <laughs> <laughs> so, on that note, could I ask? No. <laughs> <laughs> so it wasn't that long ago when we sat down and you said that you'd got all of these goals that you'd set yourself you wanted to appear on the radio you wanted yeah. to write a book oh, okay. and you can put ticks next to all of these things now so what I want to know is what's the next thing on your list I don't know Jackie actually to be <laughs> honest we, we're going off to the states in this I don't I, actually to be honest I, I don't know this has been the, the goal for so long and I know, I can look at the back there, and Jeremy over there would say, you need to have a goal beyond the goal. But actually, I haven't. But I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> right, uh, actually, wom woman's hour, actually, to be fair. Oh, woman's hour. You've done woman's hour. You did it Yeah, but not, no, but not properly. You did. <laughs> <laughs> On my own right, not, not as a sort of, we were, we were, um, we were examples. You, you were we the star. We were examples. Oh, Roger did floor, um, what's her name, Jenny Murray, didn't he? No, I, I'm, I'm Sorry, leading Lisa. on from here, actually. I think that um, your goal is actually, you've been very influential to all of us. And I think with what you've done is helped us all grow because we've all been able to kind of go, yeah, we haven't got children, and, you know, and I think that your, your next thing is something that, is, I don't know that you can do for all of us almost. Mm -hmm. Okay, thank you. <laughs> Any other questions from the floor? Anyone else? Can I just, I don't want to ask a question, I want to make a call. <laughs> I don't think it's any co coincidence that you've chosen today, which is the longest day of the year, to have your book launch. It's a day that has the most hours in it and therefore has the most joy in it. Okay. I think the flip side is that when we met, it was the shortest day, it was the longest night. It was painful, it was dark, the light wasn't off, the light was broken. The light's now mended for many, many of us in the room. And we are out of the chrysalis and we are the butterflies that you describe with all the different coloured wings. And I want to thank you for that because I think you've achieved something that many of us would love to have done, but you've actually got up and done it. And you will leave behind a legacy in the world mm. for many, many people to read. And for those of us that don't have children, leaving a legacy is really important. Thank so thank you for that. You. Enjoy your evening thank because you. you've really deserved it. Yeah. Thank, wow. thank you. Very much.